I've been meaning to make a Barbie dream house for my daughter Claire for quite some time now. And she came to me with this drawing of what she wanted to make, which looked pretty good. And then I came up with a whole system of building a sort of a bunch of parts that you could put together into a system, almost like a, a big wooden Lego set where each room would be a box and you could stack them to make whatever layout for the house you wanted to do. And there'd be stairs that would attach to the front and possibly the sides. And there'd be balconies that you could attach to each side and the possibility of doing an elevator on the end. But that was starting to get really complicated and I wasn't quite sure how it was really going to work and whether it was really going to work all that well. So I went back and talked to Claire about how she really wanted to play with this. And it just, it seemed like what I wanted to do just didn't fit with that and didn't make any sense. So I went back to just building a static structure with maybe stairs that you could move around. But then even that didn't seem like it made a whole lot of sense as the the stairs would be in the way of what you wanted to play with in the house. So we moved the stair around to the side and made it into a spiral staircase, which actually seemed pretty interesting. So I got started, and I used 5 8 inch birch plywood for the floors and the side walls. I started by cutting out the floor. And the one remnant from the modular system that I ended up keeping was to build each floor as a separate piece. Instead of building it like a bookcase where I would have the two sides run the full height and then put shelves in between the two vertical sides, I built each floor as a modular piece. And in the end, I'm not sure if that really made sense. It makes it easier to move. And if we ever wanna paint or do anything specific to each floor, we can do that a little bit easier. But really, this could have been built much more like a bookcase where the vertical sides run all the way through and you just put floors or shelves in between those two vertical sides. So on each floor, I wanted to cut out a half circle for the stair. The stair would be half in the floor and half outside the floor. And with my hold down table, I can hold each floor in the same spot. So I can make the cutout in the same place on each floor. Then I can work on the walls and there'll be a short piece. I think they're 14 inches tall and they'll be the same width as the floor. And in each one of the walls, I wanted to cut out a doorway, which is just a simple rectangle. And Barbie just fits. <laughs> and I can clean up the cut. And I couldn't resist lining them all up. Hi. And what I really couldn't resist is pushing them all over like dominoes. <laughs> so now what I need to make is the back. And the back needs to be the height of the floor plus the walls. So in the last project, the recycling bin, I talked about how woodworking is a lot about gluing pieces together and then cutting off the extra and gluing some more pieces on and cutting off the extra. I realized this, this project is sort of the opposite of that. It's cutting out pieces really precisely and then gluing them together really precisely and being done. So in gluing these together, I ended up making a scrap piece of wood that fit between the two wall pieces. And that would help get all the walls exactly the same distance apart. And it would keep the walls square to the floor. So I could glue and nail those on. And once they were on the floor, I could then use that same scrap piece of wood, which is basically a storyboard, to put the back on as well. And, and that'll hold the, the walls square to the back. So once I have it in place, I can then put the glue on and put the back in place and then nail it, nail it into place. Dun, 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 dun. Then I can make three of them <laughs> and they, they stack on top of each other. 
Now to make the stair, this is going to be about cutting out a whole bunch of treads. <laughs> That's basically what this is. So I have to cut out this little shape, which will make a, a center column and a tread and a hole to line everything up. So I had the CNC cut out the holes first, then it could cut out the, the shape of the stair tread. Now I have a down cutting eighth inch spiral bit, which is what I'm using. It works really well, but because it's a, a down cutting bit, it does tend to pack the sawdust into the cut. So I was using the compressed air to try and get the sawdust out as it was cutting. And I cut a center dowel to line everything up. And I cut four landing pieces, which are a little bit bigger than the regular treads. And I could stack everything up. Now instead of cutting registration points into each tread and trying to figure it all out beforehand, as far as how the spiral would work, I would stack it all up and get the spiral to look about right, and then I'd draw a line up the column. Then when I take all the treads apart and glue them together, I'd have a reference line to stack them correctly so that the stair would work out and start in the right place and end in the right place. For the final stair, for the third stair, I got Claire to come out and help. And she seemed to really like the stairs. <laughs> and I found that with Calvin working in the shop, he asks questions constantly, and he's constantly talking. Why, why are we doing this? Why are we gluing this together? What, how does this work? I'm, I'm bored. What, when, when's this going to be finished? Whereas Claire is quiet, but you can tell that she completely understands what's going on. And she's into what we're doing, but she's just methodical and quiet. I'm going to draw a line back right down the edge. Oh, there we go. Perfect. All the way to the very bottom one. My first batch of stair landings, which is what we're putting the glue on here. Okay, yeah, I, I screwed up and cut on the wrong side of the line. The so I had a set of four that we could use as scrap pieces of wood. And then a little bit like right over here on this one. So she would put the glue on each stair and then I would stack the tread in place. And it actually worked really well. dry. Now to hold the stairs in place, I came up with gluing the, the landing to the floor, then pinning the stair to the back and the wall to hold it upright, which meant some carefully placed holes and some short pins. This seemed to work pretty well. I needed the top of the stair to fall in the right place and I had the floor to the top piece that I could use as a guide so that the stair would fall in the right place in relation to the next floor above. So you can see me sliding that floor piece over and I could use that as a reference. And I could trim off the little pegs. On the top of the stair, I wanted a little bit of pin to stick up to attach to the, to the floor above. So I left it a little bit long. Now for the top floor, sort, sort of the, the roof deck, <laughs> that was going to be a little bit different. The back wall would have a little shape and there wouldn't be a stair. I attached the back wall to the floor. Then it would have one short wall with a doorway and I cut the top of that to the angle of the roof. So it would be flush to the top of the back. Then I could make the roof piece. And I cut that with a little bit of an angle at the, the top end of that. I could then glue the wall in place. This was about cutting out pieces perfectly and then gluing them into place and being done which completely goes against my philosophy with, with woodworking, <laughs> but that's okay. 
and put the roof in place. So now I needed to stack the floors together and have them not slide out of place or, or fall apart. So I made another story stick, basically, but it's a story stick for drill holes. So I could use the dowel at the top of the stair as sort of my reference point and then drill two holes into the top of each of the short walls. This would let me drill the two holes in the top of the walls in exactly the same place on the bottom of the next floor. So I could then put pins into all three of those holes and have the floors fit into those pins and hold itself together. And it was time to move in. And Claire had fun putting all the parts in. And when I went back and looked at her original drawing, she put the furniture in pretty close to what she had drawn. It's like she, she had in her head what she wanted to do. In fact, at one point, she had laid the bedroom out. I kind of played around with it and moved the parts around, trying to see if I could come up with a better layout. And she came back and without saying anything, rearranged it back to exactly the way she had it. Like it was in her head how it was going to be. She totally had fun setting it up. And another thing that was really interesting is every doll had to go up and down the stairs. You couldn't move a doll from floor to floor just by moving the doll from one floor to another. The doll had to actually go up and down the stair, <laughs> which was really cute. So it was nice that that was worth making and that it made perfect sense for Claire. So this may be a little bit of a rationalization, but I left the finish and the details fairly blank on this. Think of it more as a beginning point, as a blank canvas in a way. So now that the structure's in place, Claire can come in and she can do sort of the finished work if she wants to paint or add more detail or at some point in the future if we want to make railings or more furniture we, we can do that so that this dollhouse was a fairly blank framework for her to build what she wants to build if I can get a little more philosophical it's a little bit like I built a bookcase and Claire can write the stories that go on it Thanks for watching.